And that wonderful theme song means that this is Let's Talk on KWMR Radio, 90.5 Point Reyes Station, 89.9 Bolinas, 92.3 in the San Geronimo Valley, and streaming live online, kwmr.org. And today, the subject is work. Work. And uh, I'm joined in the studio by Charles Schultz. Uh, Mary, Mary Frank is uh, under the weather, in fact, in the weather, as well as being under the weather. And uh, Robin is still under the weather as well, taking a little sabbatical from the, from the show. Indeed. So uh, <laughs> too, on too short notice, uh, Charles agreed to come in <laughs> and talk about work. Well, I, I'm an expert, really. Uh, you know, um, nobody uh, works uh, harder than I do. And uh, <laughs> so I, I, th- I think I w- I'd be a good person to talk about this. And the, and the telephone number, if you'd like to join us, 663-8492, 663-8492. In the 415 area code, of course. And, yeah, I would say we can, we can start where you like. Well, let's start where I want to start. Uh, the, uh, the, the, something happened uh, over the last 150 years, and it's, it's the world we all live in now, and uh, it's one of wage work. And this, this project, the process of becoming employees, of not working for ourselves or being an employer, has a fancy name. It's, an old, uh, it's a version of an old Latin word called proletarianization. We are proletarians, and, and the strict meaning of that is, just that we work for somebody else Mm. and we're not placing an intention upon our work truly because we're doing what somebody else is paying us to do and and that uh that separation between the life you're living and uh, the work that you have to do for someone else in order to get the money to continue that life um and and your own ideas your own dreams or your intentions about what you would like to do with your life and your time when you separate those things, we enter into a new kind of world, and uh, it, it, it's one in which becomes more and more focused on fantasy and distraction. So here's how this works. Uh, you work all week to make a wage, and then you get this money, and on the weekends or your vacations, you get to use that money to have, well, what we do out here is trips. People go on trips. People, you know, who are poor play video games. Uh, uh, if you're really poor, maybe you do heroin. Actually, anybody, uh, you know, can do heroin. It, it, it isn't. Uh, it isn't a socioeconomic, uh, um, d- you know, defined uh, activity. So you know, please feel free to use heroin out here. Um, and uh, and that's supposed to make up for the fact that you traded your time, your waking life, really your consciousness, for these little bits of money. And you're supposed to be able to make that up uh, on the weekend. Yeah. The problem with this is it's impossible. The time that you spend working for somebody else, you can never make up. It's just gone. And yeah. so that proletarian style work wage slavery as it was used to be called i uh, was considered degraded condition um enlightenment thinkers considered degraded even the factory workers themselves those that became intellectuals and were writing on this uh, this topic uh, considered a degraded condition but we think it's utterly normal mm. we think it's the, the most normal thing it's just like breathing or walking you know what do you mean you don't work right. for somebody right. else for bits of money and so the reason we're doing this i chose to do the uh, the show on work. I read a uh, an article by uh, what is he? He's an economic historian, I think, James Livingston, history professor at Rutgers. Uh, and I can't say the title because it contains a four-letter word. It mm, basically work. means uh, to hell with work. I yes. guess you could say it's, you could, the and, Saxon root. You and can about say. the and, yes, exactly. And about the the changes in society and in the economy that are making. Really, finally, after been talking about it for, I don't know, what, whole century, talking about the end of work. And uh, the conditions are coming around to where work for wages may come to an end in our lifetime or in the next generation's lifetime, anyway. Um, anyway, just so I, thought, I felt that was interesting and I, I hadn't really thought about work all that much you know i do uh, i do sort of construction handyman kind of stuff and i do it because i actually enjoy doing it and i'm good at it mm. uh i do it occasionally but i'm not good at it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you help now and again uh, indeed uh but 415-663-8492 or tweet us oh tweet indeed. yes i have the tweet box this week uh tweet us at uh 
at Let's Talk on KWMR, and we have a tweet from Murray. Uh, getting food, clothing, etc. requires effort. Some folks prefer play, but most choose work to live in some comfort. And uh, you sent more, com- oh, sent more comments by email. Hmm. Uh, well, uh, we are uh, we are under. Under siege again. Hello, is anybody hearing us out there? <laughs> there we are. There we are. And in yeah, fact, we have a caller. I think we have a caller. Or maybe it was just a it was a mistake. Maybe it was just lightning. <laughs> Who <laughs> knows? They were but, trying to call um, a station house, see if they're open. Oh, look at that. No, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> they hung up. Um, they hung up. Well, um, so I read yeah, an article. So please call four one five six six three eight four nine two. We're we're discussing sort of the the conditions that are leading to sort of the end of work uh, the, as we know it, and uh, and it's it's only relatively recently in human history that this work ethic has come about, sure. in which uh, it's supposed to be character building to spend. Eight, yeah, ten hours a day at work. It's supposed to be holy. I mean, that's what Rockefeller thought about it. You know, it's an old Calvinist idea. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, the Protestant worth it. Hello, you are on the air, caller. What's your name, please? Oh, I, I don't want to tell my name. It's <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anonymous. I, I, I know your address, Mr. Anonymous. Can we can say that in the air? <laughs> I'm actually calling because uh, you guys seemed a little lonely in there <laughs> thank you that's so nice of you to keep his company yeah so to tell us uh, sir about work well from my own experience i've always been unemployable <laughs> <laughs> honestly uh last job was uh waiting counters at a hot uh at a howard johnson's restaurant oh, where was this? really no not really a few other jobs <laughs> oh i see but uh you know if you don't want to work it seems like um you have to invent something for yourself hmm. that um, you have to redefine yourself uh, in ways that uh, bring income in. I you think, don't call I, it work, but you do have to get income. I think hmm. that's that's right. I mean, and, and that was a kind of great American tradition. You think of uh, Benjamin Franklin uh, or Thomas Edison, you know, in their early teens, 12 years old, starting newspapers and you know, doing things like that. I think we've become institutionalized, and we can't function without the institutional structure and without this check that comes every two weeks and the sort of whole world you start to inhabit once you, if you've lived your whole life within these kinds of institutions. And ultimately, that becomes a problem as people can't imagine themselves existing Doing separate anything from else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody can't uh, essentially think for themselves. They're trained not to, I guess is what I would say. Our system of education, of schooling, trains people to uh, be more respectful of authority and hierarchies. I mean, this is the essential mistake that Marx makes and that people identified uh, later on, which is that wage work, proletarian work, factory work is what they're talking about. These people who are supposed to achieve consciousness and then cause this uh, communist revolution to occur, um, when you work in a factory, when you work in institutions, you become more receptive of authority and higher hierarchy and control, not uh, rejecting those things, but you inure them so, yourself to them. You, you get used to them. What's your alternative? I mean, how are people supposed to pay their rent? Uh, well, as, uh, I, you, you may not be landlord yourself, but I think landlords everywhere in West Marin should, should lower uh, their rents uh, uh, dramatically. Uh, so if if you know any landlords caller, uh, you should and uh, you should you know s- s- slash rents. Uh, that is actually a very important consideration. If it's really expensive to live, then you have to do whatever you have to do. And when you create conditions like that, then you don't have the possibility of the kind of creativity that you're talking about. And it's really dangerous for a culture. And we've gone into a really ghostly kind of dreamlike world in which we still have the symbols of that kind of freedom and creativity. Lots of artists, lots of writers, but you don't have the reality. Of, of art and literature and things like that because it's all placed on this burden of control, of having to please a marketplace and get money and blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, you know, sometimes people's community are at their work. It's not just, uh, they're not just working there to uh, uh, complete a job. There are other aspects. Their friends are there. Uh, there's camaraderie. Oh, sure. Uh, this isn't all just factory, uh, you know. Oh, no, that's – but, but the, the problem is is the nicer the job, the worse the condition because you don't realize you're in it. And I read an article this morning about people who work for Google, and they say, 
you know, they make it so nice. You spend all of your time there, but you have this sinking feeling that they own all of your time. Mm. And nobody can criticize it because yeah. people outside Google, if they try and talk about the, the, what they don't like about working about Google, think, oh, it's the best job ever. How could you criticize mm. it, et cetera? Mm. And within the institution, if you try and criticize it, that is like unthinkable because everybody is supposed to accept this fantasy that this is the greatest thing ever. And the reality is, you know, most of these people while away their time not working on interesting projects, you know, take Taking you know comments down off YouTube, you know these are people went to you know mm. the best universities and are supposed to be the brightest people, and they don't like it, and they don't like that level of institutional control because it's stifling creativity. On the other hand, one they're not allowed to talk about it or even think it. Really, I mean that's what the the dangerous situation we've gotten to uh, into as a society is people don't even think what they're not supposed to think anymore. Well, wait a second. What you're talking about is really a luxury, though. Um, we still need we still need to get from point A to point B. Somebody still has to pump the gas. Mm -hmm. uh, you want you walk into the store. Uh, you know somebody has to fill the shelves. Mm -hmm. Somebody's there taking the money from you. Uh, these things are happening. Uh, are you proposing that we do without those so everybody can uh, can? Uh, you know, have a, a fulfilling life of creativity? Well, creativity comes in many forms. There are many different kinds of creativity. I mean, it's not that we're all going to become poets um, uh, or something like <laughs> that. Poetry. Yeah, right. It, well, I mean, that was sort of Marx's vision. You know, we'd <clears throat> garden in the morning and uh, write poetry in the afternoon and dance and sing in the evening. Whatever. I still Bob. like that. That's what I try and do. <laughs> the alienation of work. The, the, the Marxism but, of one. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the, some jobs are still going to be there, but there is a, actually a report that I read, uh, MIT and Oxford uh, economists, saying that uh, almost half of the jobs that exist now and by 20 within 20 years will be automated there'll be right. it'll be computers so, and the right. population is not shrinking well so it's stagnating we're, so we're reaching the, the point we're reaching the point where jobs are going to be more scarce and there will still be more people coming. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yes, of course, not, there will be the service West. jobs. There will still be carpenters who still need to do that. There will still be <laughs> guys connecting your computer and putting up your uh, Wi-Fi towers and all that. But there's going to be widespread unemployment and uh, society is – our society, especially, needs to learn how to handle that, and, and it's already happened. It happened in the, in the Midwest 45 years ago. So much employment, we're going to get tired of employment. Well, I just think that you know this is already <laughs> under Donald Trump. Yeah, this, well, this already happened in the industrial Midwest where I'm from. It hasn't happened in the Bay Area in quite the same way, although it did happen here too. Um, but uh, uh, so that that's a problem. And how do you deal with it? Very interesting. Well, the first thing you do is you fire all the minorities, which is what happened, because mm -hmm. nobody cares about them. Mm -hmm. And then because you have these people who you have no jobs to employ, you start putting them in jail for you things know, like if, possessing marijuana. Yes, and, and then you have the slave labor in the jails that, that what, produces you, many things for our armed forces, for example. Everybody in jail. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, and, and, and like I say, so, Steve, how do you – pardon me, uh, mystery caller, uh, how do you um, uh, uh, imagine another world? Well, You know, I, what I imagine is uh, the world eventually coming to the point where we live, we've, we're, we've reversed, we've gone a thousand years back or 3,000 years, and we're, we're living more on a uh, hunter-gatherer uh, level. It seems to me hunting-gathering societies uh, – don't have work, so to speak. People well, have differentiated uh, activities, but they're not. You wouldn't. They don't think of themselves as working. Well, that's but, right. I mean, this is this is when we talk about work. What we mean is wage slavery, proletarian work, uh, alienated work. We're not we're not talking about the the joy of of uh, gardening to make your own you know food or you know if you like to hunt, going and hunting. Work means something very specific to us, and it means selling our conscious lives. To strangers, corporations, nonprofits, whatever, uh, to serve somebody else's interest, not our own intention. And people say, "But oh, I wanted to do all that." Well, what else are you going to say? That you sold your mind for you the best part a, of your life, at least a third of your de your living days, <laughs> yeah, right? And sold them to you know some serving you know. someone else. And <clears throat> the, the, of course, the ideal is having work that you enjoy, having work that is that feels creative, that is uh, that is socially meaningful, that provides. Things Things for durable things, not just toys and 
gig goals for uh, for <clears throat> local community to start with, and uh, well, well, just, it, there's going to be a shrinking, a reduction in uh, in in uh, how you, in the products of work and in how far they go. I mean, it's going to be it's going to have to be more localized, and that's when you start doing work that's socially meaningful because you're yeah. actually working for your community. I so. think it portends, though, uh, a tremendous, cha- a tremendous uh, uh, yeah, chaos uh, fighting. I see civil war. Mm-hmm. I see uh, uh, if, if, at 4% unemployment, people go crazy. What happens when it's 20% unemployment? Well, no, the exactly. problem is, Steve, it is 20%. Sorry again. The mystery caller, it is 20, uh, it is 20%. 30 <laughs> Well, the thing is, yeah, what happens is, but the thing is, you know, this is this fictional world that we live in. Charles, People talk, what happens when the consumer society uh, can't consume anymore? Can't consume anymore. I, mm-hmm. they, they do go bananas, but that's okay because they could also, there's another potential. It isn't just a downside. There's a potential people become adults. Consumers are children, they're, and they're lifelong children. You could read Benjamin Barber's book, Consumed, on this topic, but it's an old topic, which is just... You know that uh, uh, in, you know children are the best kinds of consumers because they act on impulse uh, and and they they don't think through their decisions uh, or don't have enough information to make good decisions, and uh, so the the consumer world is one in which if they can keep you thinking like a child, then you're the ultimate person to to sell to. And so what I see is forty year olds playing video games, you know for you know people people in middle age doing these ch- children's activities or or always being obsessed with this essentially recess, you know, their play, their summer vacation. That's a child's world uh, and a, a, not an adult's world. So I, I think that, yeah, the cons- consumption of the, of the kind that we engage in infantilizes us. It never is about how we build up our own competence to provide these things for, our, uh, ourselves. for ourselves. Yeah, exactly. So you have all the talents you need, say, in the town of Tamales and its environs to run that town completely from the engineering skills that you would need to the builders, to the farmers, to whatever. Exactly. But it doesn't function as a community. In fact, no place in West Marin does. I dispute the term community. I think it's a, f- a phantom. It's a fiction. We, we keep repeating it, hoping that it will materialize somehow. But it's just a, a, a sentiment, essentially. Agreed. Uh, um, but, but it's not necessary. All the skills are there. People, we're doing yeah. it already. Yeah. Um, it would be how do you reconfigure the existing skills that we have in such a way that we are now trying to serve each other, in essence, Rather than serve someone for a wage, so that we can continue to buy, mm. you know, um, and that's uh, a, a question that may have many answers. It certainly does have many answers, and we'd have to ponder. This kind of life gives us no time for those kinds of uh, acts of contemplation or discussion with other people, because all of our interactions with other people has just become a sort of sentimental fiction as well. Mm. Pleasantries, essentially. Group loneliness is what I see amongst <laughs> people gathering out here. And frankly, a society which is merely organized misanthropy. Mm. It is a lot of selfish, lonely competition against others. Charles? Uh, yes, Steve. Oh, but, <laughs> yes. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh, oh you're still there. Good. Um, yes, let me uh, hang on. I just want to need to read this uh, important broadcast message. Inverness and West Marin schools are having an emergency minimum day to day due to the weather. Inverness school closes at 12.15, about an hour from now, and West Marin school closes at 12.30. Parents are asked to make arrangements. Again, there is a weather-related minimum day to day at Inverness and West Marin schools. There you go. Anyway. Um, Final thoughts, Steve? I mean, Mr. Ano- Mr. Anonymous. <laughs> What's the court you are? What was that? Uh, final thoughts. I, I was. Uh, my mind was drifting. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you bet. I think it's time for me to uh, uh, say goodbye. Okay. Uh, Thank you for calling. Yeah. Oh, and remember, if you want to foster creativity, lower the rent. Tell any landlord you know, lower the rent to about two hundred bucks a month. There you go. The, the rents are. We, <laughs> Can't cut your tongue. Counting for inflation. Oh, I see. Down here are just ridiculously low. Well, you know, I think that that's a very good point. Is that it's wages have stagnated for forty years, but mm-hmm. house prices have increased, you know, so dramatically that there's no way that a millennial can live the lifestyle that their uh, that their we, parents were living. I agree that, that your generation. Uh, has no prospects whatsoever. <laughs> I, I, seriously. No, it's all going to change. It's all going to change. Oh, no, but the, I have an option. I, uh, intergenerational warfare. Uh, find an old person and kill them uh, <laughs> and take their house. What, what do you consider old? Uh, well, West Marin, it's a sliding scale, isn't it? 
Uh, you know, I, I see a lot of spry 80-year-olds have new girlfriends. Uh, hey, <clears throat> adios amigos. Enjoy the rest of the Thank you episode. very much. Please, an anonymous caller. Please uh, call <laughs> us. Please call us. 663-8492 is the number. This is Let's Talk. Let's talk radical radio, and uh, yes, when you uh, when you call in, you'll hear a funny little hissing noise as I put you in the system. Just hang on oh. in there, and uh, and when you hear me say you're on the air, you're on the air, and please watch your language. Hi, caller, you are on the air. What's your name, please? Hello, uh, this is Paul calling from Park. <laughs> hey, Paul. <laughs> this is Trump's America. Only white men are allowed to call, and I should have said that. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, you don't need to say it. Everybody understands it implicitly now. Yes, caller. Well, I just wanted to introduce you know, this, uh, the, uh, the element of, of education and all of this because, uh, you know, uh, I think everyone has an intuitive sense of, <clears throat> of how to live more independently, such as growing their own food or, or you know, working at home, starting small, small businesses, uh, starting their own nonprofits, getting involved in politics, you know, things where you're, you're in charge and, and it's a small business, but it's, but it's, uh, your, you control it and therefore you're not a proletarian. Yeah. And, um, and, but educationally, it's how, how does one prepare for this? You know, and it's, and I face it as a parent whose who's, uh, oldest child is approaching college age, but you know, the, the whole question of how do you, prepare someone for, for this other way of life where you're not just trying to get a degree so you can get a, a good paying job but you're trying to figure out what you want to do and then acquire the skills so that you can get started right then in doing what you want to do rather than waiting you know four years or six years through a bachelor's degree a master's degree you know how do you how do you uh, change education uh, to to prepare people and change the idea of education, right? So going away to college and spending a lot of getting into a lot of debt um, is arguably problematic in this new world of no employment or low employment. Mm. Uh, so what is the purpose of the degree, you know, 10, 20 years from now or, or even today? Um, what is, if it isn't to, to provide that track to employment, then, then it would be have to be rethought, and specifically around, you know, the, the, the idea of, of a liberal arts education, where one develops diverse skills and flexibility that are necessary for independence, but are an impediment often to, to professional advancement in a, in a corporate environment, you know, being too independently minded, having your own opinions, etc. And learning skills that will uh, make you more self-sufficient. Go down the line when you're, uh, uh, yeah. And then there's already here's a quote from this article. Already a fourth of adults actually employed in the U.S. are paid wages lower than would lift them above the poverty line. A fifth of American children live in poverty, poverty, and almost half of employed adults in this country are eligible for food stamps. The market in labor has broken down along with most others. Well, and I think here's a problem. You know, people I saw, I, this is one of my favorites, a Black Lives uh, Matter uh, sign in, in Inverness. Well, I mean, how would they know? Um, the, uh, the point is here, we talk about $15 minimum wage, blah, 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 blah. Well, think about if, if, you, if you consider that it is normal and good for people to say uh, own their own home um, what you would have to adjust the wages that these nonprofits you know <clears throat> uh, pay their employees uh, in order that they could actually live in, in West Marin so uh, what I'm calling for is all of the uh, workers at uh, um, KWMR to immediately make $80 an hour <laughs> and I think I have Mia and Lyons to support on this uh, so Amanda get cracking it is going to be a bigger pledge drive than you imagined but uh, but this is the problem you're, you're telling people that they should live a certain way and promoting that constantly the only way to do that is to take on such a massive amount of debt uh, that you'd be a slave to whoever you could get employment from, if you could even get the credit to 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 take on these loans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this uh, this article actually poses a, a one answer, which is to begin with, you raise the arbitrary lid on social security contributions, which now stands at one hundred twenty seven thousand odd dollars, and we raise taxes on corporate income and pay people 
not to work. I mean, you, the, people work fewer hours. They don't work the eight-hour day or the 12-hour day or whatever they're doing. They work fewer hours, so more people are employed doing the same work. Uh, that exists already, and you get a stipend from the government to bring you above the poverty line, which ev- which most of people are on anyway. Right. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I think this idea of the federal government paying people is a really bad one, and I right. know people people are going to disagree with that. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be a social safety net, but I th- would like to see it provided for on a much lower level than say what the federal government wants, because what happens is we like those kinds of things if we think that the president is a good guy, but when the president is then a, a bad guy, oh my gosh, look at all the power that he has. Mm. So nobody minded very much when Obama was president that they were d- bombing everybody and mm. surveil- you know, uh, surveilling everyone's uh, emails and activities because, oh, you know, he's nice. He's nice. Yeah. Did you hear him sing on TV? That was, I very like Al Green. I mean, really impressive. Mm. Uh, but now that there's a bad guy who's the president, everyone's panicked about all the powers that the government has. So mm-hmm. I just think, you know, when you give the government that much power, you're, you're, you're making an assumption about the uh, beneficence uh, of the of the uh, well, yeah, the and, great leader. And this plan that this uh, that uh, James Livingston has here is not obviously not going to be happening in the next four <laughs> years. Uh, but something like that, something in which uh, people either are working, doing, uh, helping community just for trade, trading their their skills. Uh, and receiving, they're going to be, if they're not working, they're going to be receiving unemployment or some kind of uh, benefit from the government anyway. I'm not getting enough. On that point, it seems to me that right now, because of the tax exemption for the extremely wealthy and for corporate profits Hmm. and importation, that, you know, it's the, the masses, the income taxes on the masses, which is paying for the government right now. And so, uh, you know, if, if there were any kind of significant shift toward taxing imported goods or taxing uh, wealth rather than income, mm-hmm. uh, then you would simply, I would think, have you want to, to focus on eliminating income taxes for people who make less than $50,000 a year. Mm. And rather than regarding that as a gift of money, it would simply be, you know, eliminate taxes on low income. And if, instead of focusing on increasing taxes for high income, focus it on wealth, which is most of wealth is not from income, mm. from profits, capital gains, and, and so on. Yeah, the wealthy don't realize incomes at all. Yeah, and they're often a cause of tax, further tax exemption. I mean, they all are. Well, everything they do is expensed, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I'm just saying, I think in a way that the whole idea that that's a, 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 of, of paying people not to work, it's sort of putting a, a twist on it that pretends to be socialistic mm. and it doesn't address the real issue which is that because the wealthy don't pay taxes it's the poor who are who are funding all this and that's part of what needs to change mm. yeah. and we're going to be basically poorer too because wages are not going up and jobs are are not increasing but what um, i found was actually being well, poor it was also to, to trade policy right so that if you mm. if you have a local economy where people are buying more local um because imported goods are more expensive than local goods. That's what would change if you, if you do that. Then there's more opportunity for people to start small businesses uh, to provide those goods. And so they're, re- they're related at the hip. Uh, and I think the idea of a future of, of an economy is, in a way, uh, needs a grounding in, in that question of, of whether or not there's going to be, in that new world, a localization of, of economics that, uh, that would create a new foundation for for a new economy. Right, because right now what we have is all sentimentalized. You can buy organic and GMO-free products, but only if you've made a mint someplace else being plugged into the global economy in some way. Yeah. I mean, th- this is the irony of the, uh, of, of the, all of these sentimental, um, you know, whatever uh, engagements people have. Uh, is basically everything is tourist serving out here, yeah, and uh, or serving certain kinds of fantasies we have about ourselves, and we don't have a capacity to even talk about those fantasies because if you try, it is very upsetting for people. Just like that article I was reading about Google said that they can't have internal conversations at Google about what doesn't work about the place because they all have to buy into this fiction, this dream, and if anyone even attempts to discuss the nature of the fiction or the dream. It's viewed as an attack on their being. It's viewed as an attack on their, you know, 
effect on their whole worldview, et cetera. So th- there's no capacity in this culture, so to speak, for self-criticism. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't want to hear it. We like criticizing other people. We, you know, everybody wants to say what the president should or shouldn't do, but we don't want cri- any criticism of who we are and how we, f- we function. You can criticize the president, but you can't criticize your boss, as you, you once said. No, well, that's the, you know, they said the difference between the Soviet Union and the, the United States. Uh, in the Soviet Union, you could criticize your uh, the uh, you couldn't criticize the president, but you could criticize your boss. In the United States, you can criticize the president, but not your boss. Incidentally, that wasn't true in the Soviet Union. It was just one of those sayings. <laughs> but, but, uh, you couldn't criticize your boss there. Uh, so, um, uh, but yeah, I mean that 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 is the issue, and people would take that for empowerment. And, and people would, would take the, their opinions on these federal and global questions of which they can basically know nothing. And maybe nobody can really wrap their head around. Uh, maybe they just they exist on a scale that defies our ability to, to, to really deeply understand them. Uh, but they would think having an opinion about those things is politics hmm. or that or is, is you know, criticism. Um, we have an email from Murray Seward. Uh, working for money has some pluses, and rich people aren't all lazy exploiters. Yes, you are. <laughs> A few points. Getting food, clothing, etc. requires effort, usually some of which is less fun than alternatives, such as swimming or painting pictures. Some folks do prefer play, but most of us choose work so that we can live in some comfort. Maybe I work 50 hours to buy a smartphone, but get thousands of hours of pleasure from the device. Uh, what are you doing with that smartphone, Murray? Uh, probably being an executive is more pleasant than working in a hot factory, but top dog work has its own negatives. Yes, of course, such as stress leading to various illnesses. Yeah. Workplace does provide one important benefit besides money. Many people find their best friends at work. I've often loved the social dimension of workplaces that in other ways were lacking. Um, unequal distribution of rewards for work isn't fundamentally a work issue, but rather an economic issue or a moral issue, I would say. But anyway, uh, problem isn't work, but politics. Too many workers chose to support politicians who promised them intangibles and it, uh, instead of supporting laws that would allow unions to be powerful. Yeah, well, that was the heyday, yes. I mean, this we agreed all... on that, the unionization after after the Second World War. The, they the ran out of control. Time of plenty, right? You know, I mean, it, this is, look. I, everyone I, had a good job. Everyone had a car and a chicken well, and a pot. I, I'll give you an example of this. By 1979 in England, the Labour government, right, which is, has been basically, uh, it's been doing terrible things just to try and maintain itself. Since 75, 76, they take a huge loan from the IMF, and it's really the beginning of Thatcherism. But leaving that to one side, the Labour government, Labour Prime Minister, is begging the unions, do not ask for wage increases beyond this amount, because it is going to cause this massive dislocation within the economy, and et cetera, et cetera. And the corporations and the unions, both, uh, starting with uh, Ford, actually, um, lovely Ford Corporation, uh, asked for and received massive increases, and it triggered a cascade of strikes and wage demands that brought down the government, and then you had 18 years of conservative government in England. So the unions, you know, this idea that there's some uh, particular wisdom or virtue uh, in a union, I, I don't I don't see that. It, it, it is, in theory, possible, and it can do good things, but, you know, it isn't just, oh, we need more unions and then things would be fine. No, it's, it, it, well, everything run by people, especially men, gets corrupted, right? I mean, that's, yeah, they, it gets they, too big, they want yeah. more power, they want more, 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 more. Um, yeah, I mean, after World War II, America became very wealthy, and so yeah. having this partnership between labor and corporations worked for a while because there was plenty of fat. It was easy. Right. But as the normal economic uh, uh, conditions resumed, that became less easy, and then with globalization and opening of free trade agreements uh, compounded. And similar to, you know, after the, the uh, plague, in Europe, the middle, in the Middle Ages, you know, a great prosperity uh, followed, in which the the the, you know, the peasants had more in, more influence, and, they, and wages were driven up, and uh, and so you have this sort of uh, factor, which is not really you couldn't call it normal unless we would say that we need to have wars all the time in order to be prosperous, but that's that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. And so, in, in a normal environment. Uh, we can't assume this this level of prosperity, and so for purposes of of you know d- democracy theory, you know 
can we have a democracy, can we have a, a, a self-governing society, without that prosperity, we've got to deal with the need for, for degrowth, you know, to, to drive down our, our notions about consumption, consumption productivity. Exactly. And um, if you live at home, it's much easier to grow your, if, I'm sorry, if you work at home, it's much easier to grow your own food. Sure. And there are these other sort of multiplier effects um, that, that, that come into play once you make the leap into a new way of life where you're not driving somewhere all the time. Um, and, and so I, I think there are uh, that's that's where we can live in, in a world that has lower gross domestic product uh, because there is less um, use of, of money, much less use of credit, um, and more bartering, more uh, direct self-production, you know, like growing your own food, avoiding purchasing, basically avoiding mm-hmm. gross, domestic, gross domestic product yeah. uh, deliberately. Well, we also, I mean, subsidize this by, um, oh, we've got some announcements coming up. And, and uh, uh, <laughs> we are, I'm being told to make room for other callers. Caller, we've, we've had just enough. <laughs> do you have anything else to say? No, that'll do it. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Paul. All right. Um, that that uh, we subsidize this decline in the in the economy through immigration to keep mm-hmm. food prices low, to keep uh, the, mm-hmm. the, you know, all of the services that make this economy function to continually, to, uh, continue to be cheap. Well, we used immigrants to do that, people mm-hmm. who would have less rights, less ability to unionize. You know, the, the farm workers are apparently in worse conditions now in the Central Valley in California than they were in the 1950s. Uh, you know, the Cesar Chavez thing is a nice feel-good story. People don't realize that the United Farm Workers collapsed, interestingly enough, because of uh, Charlie Dietrich's influence on Chavez, but that's another story. Um, and, anyway. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is about work. Okay, some, yeah, some yeah, announcements. Yeah. No, no, it's good. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is KWMR, Point Reyes <laughs> Station, 90.5 Point Ray Station, 89.9 Bolinas, 92.3 San Geronimo Valley, streaming live at kwmr.org. And KWMR is supported by West Marin Food and Farm Tours, offering culinary adventures in the Point Reyes area. Trips include local history, behind-the-scenes tours, and tastings of cheese, wine, oysters, grass-fed meats, pastries, produce, and more. Details available online at foodandfarmtours.com. That's foodandfarmtours.com. KWMR is also supported by West Marin Rotary, a leadership organization supporting community projects locally and worldwide. Listeners are welcome to join the Rotarians 8 a.m. Wednesday mornings in downtown Point Reyes Station near their new project, the West Marin Rotary Peace Garden. Exact meeting location available at 415-686-8544 and online at westmarinrotary.org. Information about international projects online at rotary.org. I helped build that peace garden. Yeah, I was made an honorary there member of Rotary. <laughs> See, doing good work for the community. I was, a wonderful thing. I was paid several sandwiches. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Cynthia Harlan. Mm, exactly. Uh, uh, National Weather Service has issued an urban and small stream flood advisory for Sonoma and Marin counties in effect until 4.15 today. Uh, moderate to heavy rain impacting the North Bay, which will result in urban and small stream flooding in the advisory area. Typical flood-prone, low-lying, and poorly drained areas are already experiencing localized flooding. Additional rainfall through the late morning and early afternoon will continue to exacerbate localized flooding. Excessive runoff from heavy rainfall will cause flooding of small creeks and streams, country roads, farmland, and other low-lying spots. Turn around. Don't drown when encountering flooded roads. Most flood deaths occur in vehicles. That was from National Weather Service. Inverness and West Marin schools are having an emergency minimum day today due to the weather. Inverness school closes at 12.15, in about half an hour, and West Marin school closes at 12.30 p.m. Parents are asked to make arrangements. Again, there's a weather-related minimum day today at Inverness and West Marin schools. And also the wind advisory. It's blowing out there. Windy conditions expected today through Friday morning over higher terrain and along the coast. 
Uh, winds, southerly winds, 25 to 35 miles per hour with gusts up to 50 miles per hour possible, especially along the coast and in the hills. Impacts would be down trees, limbs and power lines are possible. Secure loose outdoor objects such as lawn furniture. The winds this strong can make driving difficult, especially for high-profile vehicles. Use extra caution. That would be the van I'm driving today, of course. <laughs> and caller, we have a caller, you are on the air. What's your name, please? Ross. Oh, yes. <laughs> is, that, is that your middle name, sir? I'm, I'm... Uh, no. <laughs> You're listening to Let's Organ On here on KWMR. Uh, yes, <laughs> Ross. <user crowd. laughs> I'm, I want to throw a, uh, a kind of curveball in this whole discussion. Okay. You can try see if you can take it in another direction. Excellent. It seems to me the antonym of work is play. Mm -hmm. Now, when I grew up uh, a long time ago, there were empty lots, and we would go out in the morning. We would find some neighborhood kids. There were neighborhood kids, and we'd play baseball, football, whatever. Now, play is directed or supervised, and like work, it's done for a reward. People, hmm. you know, go out to, quote, play for scholarships, for pro leagues, and the, the season is not limited. You know, they're, they're, they're going to special camps, they're lifting weights and so on year-round. So the, for the very young now, you say work's disappearing. For the very young, play is now like work. I'd like to comment hmm. on that, and well, I'll take it off the air. Well, thank you so much, no, Ross. Thank you, Ross. Well, you know, the, uh, Vablin talks about this, the work of leisure. Um, and, uh, you know, the, yeah, the, this, but again, I, I see it as a function of alienation. I see it as a function of people don't have control over their work, so they have to make up for that in their play. And mm -hmm. so the play has to become increasingly elaborate, like structured, expensive, uh, distracting, entertaining. Desperate craving for, for leisure. Yeah, it, yeah, because there's a desperation in the play. You have to play because if you're not doing the play, then who have you been renting your mind to for the last, you know, 10 years? I mean, it is really it becomes an existential problem. People mm. after a certain age are, will simply be unable to acknowledge that they've rented their brain to the stupidest kid in class for their whole life, and they did it <laughs> so they could go to Oaxaca once a year. Okay. Uh, so uh, Mia writes on Twitter. That's at. Uh, let's talk on KWMR if you'd like to tweet us. Um, Mia says, I like the structure, accomplishment, social part of working for someone. It's possible to maintain integrity and creativity within structure. There yeah. you go. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> test the limits of that. You'll but of course, she is working for a wonderful nonprofit here. In <laughs> well, no, West KWMR Maine. has the exact same problem. There's certain kinds of topics and ways of talking about topics they don't want to engage in. Why? Because they need to raise money from donations from lovely listeners like sure. you, in order to survive. And consciously or unconsciously, that bounds the kinds of conversations that you're going to hear. And that's true of all of these uh, institutions that have these, these essentially have been forced to submit to a kind of market discipline. Um, I think Gator Mar does great programming. So I'm, I'm not saying this is just a, you know, it means that you're always going to end up with a bad outcome. But, oh, we do, we have this tweet from Amanda. She will increase everyone's hourly wage to $85 <laughs> an hour. But that does mean we're still $700,000 short in our goal. So if you haven't pledged already. Uh, uh, Bertrand Russell, in his classic essay, In Praise of Idleness, said, a great deal of harm is being done in the modern world by belief in the virtuousness of work. Instead, the road to happiness and prosperity lies in an organized diminution of work, which was, of course, the whole idea that, of, that the union started out with. They were trying to get a work day that was actually actually Less. gave some free time to the, the French. Peasants. The French got it to about thirty dollars an hour. Yeah, I mean, I think the work share thing would be fine. Although I think the problem with this is that we living in a, a time in which contemplation and thinking about what you're doing and not just what you're doing, but why you're doing what you're doing. This is a kind of internal exploration that almost cannot be allowed to occur hmm. because what we would see is we live in ways that are destructive, that are competitive rather than cooperative, that are uh, 
uh, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> um, that come at a massive cost in terms of the impact on the planet and, and also just say the impact of loneliness and alienation and atomized society that needs to always maintain its distraction from the fact that their commute is ruining their marriage and means they have no relationship to their children. Uh, they're, you know, mm-hmm. living alone in an apartment is, is uh, 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 what, what would uh, our old uh, friend have said about loneliness? Unsustainable. Uh, you know, but, but it's how do you make the unsustainability of a particular way of living sustainable or at least appear to be sustainable you need mm-hmm. to maintain constant motion distraction and never have contemplation mm-hmm. and and the real pernicious quality i would say of west marine culture is for all sorts of people selling the idea of contemplation mm-hmm. you could buy objects that if somebody sees them might think well that's a contemplative person but there's no actual contemplation going on mm-hmm. just some magic and religion and whatever um, oh, and call 663-8492. 663-415-663-8492. Tell us your thoughts about work. Oh, and how is your work life, by the way? And how is your life without work? How does? How about that one? Um, there's a, an email from someone here. I quite fortunately and with much gratitude managed to avoid ordinary 40-hour-a-week full-time jobs for all but three of my 50 working years. Uh during those 50 years, we've heard about the end of work as we've known it. Uh, it looks like the time has finally arrived when we need to think seriously about it. Uh, I knew what work I wanted to do when I was 17 and also knew I'd never be paid enough for it to survive on. I've been pursuing it for 47 years, got a $30,000 grant for work related to it, about $500 in profits from a book written, and may even make some money for an e-course that is tangentially related to it. So there's the the other thing that was featured in this wonderful interview in the Point Raised Light today. <laughs> uh, Russell Chatham who uh, is an artist. Don't you mean uh, the interviewer? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Russell Chatham is an artist who knew that if he was going to be an artist, he would he would be poor. Yeah. And you just you just say, Okay, I'm gonna be poor for the rest of my life if I'm going to do something that I am called to do. Well, and I think that that's actual deprivation. I mean, now I'd see people who would call themselves poor, and it's easy to do, relatively speaking, in West Marin. I mean, we're all poor compared to, you know, some of these folks. Uh, but I, they still have the the iPhone. They still have the trips. They still have the cars. So mm. they say poverty. But what Chatham was saying is this is a real trade off. You don't get the trips. You don't get the iPhone. You don't get the play because you want control over your time and activities. And that is an exchange that people don't, are willing to make. And by the way, people like patriarchy. They like hierarchy. They like working for other people and not thinking for themselves. And so it doesn't surprise me to say, oh, I really like work. Well, this is an infantilized world, and you know, this only interested in which toys. Well, there is there is work that you can like. I mean, you you do work that you like. Yeah, but you, nobody gives you any money for right, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's the point. I mean, you have to. Yeah, have I to do be... work that I like. I get paid a little bit for it. I don't charge them as much as most people do, but because please, I enjoy doing it. Please call six six three eight four nine two. Four one five six six three eight four nine two. Call and let us know your opinions here. Um, the purpose we work towards is probably more important than the work itself. Our life objectives determine the reasons for working. In earlier days, we worked to build our home, to grow and hunt food, and to ensure as much as possible a secure and happy home. We worked to set the stage for a meaningful and happy life with those we care about. Uh, Today, most work is all about buying stuff, right? I mean, it's it's paying rent, of course, which is a huge <clears> chunk <throat> out here, especially. But oh yeah, well, no, that that's why Katie are increasing its hourly wage to a minimum <laughs> of eighty five dollars an hour. And uh, um, oh, I can taking see a, taking a page out of Donald Trump's book, just saying it often just, enough just, will make it happen. Have, somebody call in and donate a million dollars, and we can do this. <laughs> and then Mia can have a house, and Lions can. What do you want to do, Lions? I don't know. Here's uh, Benjamin <clears> Franklin. Remember that time is money. He that can earn ten shillings a day by his labor and goes abroad or sits idle one half of that day, though he spends but sixpence during his diversion, ought not to reckon that the only expense he has really spent, or rather thrown away five shillings besides. So that, you know, the work ethic and time is money and don't waste time, don't have leisure because... We did. Yep, yeah. yeah. and uh, and um, yeah. Now it's uh, the consumption. It's this great consumption. We used to we used to work. 
uh, you know, in the old days, we used, to, <laughs> we used to work to provide our needs. Now we're working for want. Right? Well, and but I think that this is something that's going to be reexamined because in the, in, you know, as Paul was saying to some extent, in the post-war period, there was this time where you go to the school and the school is, is designed to train you in a very narrow way so that you'll be able to perform kind of factory work and respond to bells and all the rest of it, right? And then you go work in that factory. And for the wages that you make in that factory, you could support a family, you could buy a house, you could buy a car, you could buy a boat, you mm -hmm. could buy a second house. There was this period from, you know, from 45 to 65 where that was a reality. Uh, that's gone mm -hmm. because we've massively inflated the amount of credit in the economy, and and what that the one of the direct impacts of that was uh, on housing. Wages stayed low, uh, and so you didn't get certain kinds of inflation. We were able to control certain kinds of inflation, like for food prices, et cetera. But the uh, but the prices of houses are just out of control. So there's no deal anymore. There's no factory to work in. Mm -hmm. There, is, if there was, it's are you going to be able to make enough money to to afford to buy a house? Maybe not. Um, but the schools are still there, and the institutions themselves are not being dramatically reimagined. Mm. You know, one of the ideas that uh, they had down in Oakland, <clears throat> the folks that ran Jerry Brown's campaign, hi, Paul and Julia, um, was to close all those old prison schools and take the proceeds to buy up housing in neighborhoods and have the schools be conducted in old buildings within neighborhoods in a much more sort of small and organic way. If you go to the fanciest schools in America, that's kind of what they do. And they were saying, well, we need to do this in Oakland because our schools are not functioning anymore. Mm -hmm. But we're going to we're going to have to get into these questions. We're going to have to think about this again. Mm -hmm. And that is painful for Americans because we've been trained not to think. And people who I would say, I want you to think, I mean, you know, people people run across the street. Oh, geez, there comes Charles. He's going to want me to think about something. Let's get out of here. <laughs> uh, you know, they don't want to do it. That's um, okay. They will. Yeah, and a <clears> wonderful <throat> work you should, that people should look for. Andre Gortz's uh, uh, Critique of Economic Reason, which was uh, another thing that was fabulous to read this week, all about the ideology of work, the crisis of work. The work ethic has become obsolete. It's no longer true that producing more means working more. This is because of the microchip revolution, right? The, sure. the, the automation of so many things. Uh, or that producing more will lead to a better way of life. The connection between more and better has been broken. Our needs for many products and services are already more than adequately met, and many of our as yet unsatisfied needs will be met not by producing more, but by producing differently, producing other things, or even producing less. Yes, so there it is. Neither is it true any longer that the more each individual works, the better off everyone will be. Well, and I think that this is the thing. We always think of less as a sacrifice. It really isn't. You know, mm -hmm. I uh, consume really, uh, relatively speaking, very, very little. And, I, and I, I do very, very little wage work. And people would think, oh, that's some kind of sacrifice I've made. Or maybe I'm doing it for ethical reasons. It really isn't. It is aesthetic. It is essential to need less in a way and to not be obsessed by having to have certain kinds of things in order to feel alive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and I would say, I mean, that aesthetic dimension of, say, growing your own food, it tastes better. You know, it just does. You can't buy as mm -hmm. good a tomato as you can grow. But people don't know that. And that's a kind of scary continent. That's an unknown place that they they have fear sort of getting into. But uh, let me say, I encourage you to do it while you're young <laughs> because it's something difficult. To uh, it gets more and more difficult uh, uh, as time goes by. Mm -hmm. So 663-8492, please. Please Someone call. call in. Don't just give us a call. Give us a, your thoughts and opinions about work or your experiences of work. Um, let's see. Uh, I'd better read that one again. <laughs> Inverness and West Marine Schools are having an emergency minimum day today due to the weather. Inverness School closes at 12.15. West Marine School closes at 12.30. Parents are asked to make arrangements. We have a caller. We do. Very exciting. Hello, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? Hey, Paul. This is Marcel. Hey, Marcel. How are you? Okay. Oh, I'm good. Um, good program on work. Uh, so, first of all, I want to say um, people have a lot of talents, and barter is one of the best ways. And, or, you know, even in West Marin, we would just do a little uh, um, a schedule of what everybody can do and uh, what they're willing to share. And, uh, you know, people can get away with, with uh, not spending money for a lot of things. They just trade for what they they have and what, what they their talents. The other thing is I want to mention a fantastic book 
which I read, uh, it's one of the, the most influential books of my life. I read it a few years ago. Uh, it's called The Joy of Not Working. <laughs> That's my book. I'm the author of that. Okay, <laughs> and this is the subtitle, A Book for the Retired, Unemployed, and Overworked. <laughs> <laughs> by uh, by Ernie E R N I E J Zelinsky G E L I N S K I, uh, and he's a Canadian. Uh, he was, I think, he was an engineer, and he lost his job, uh, and then he decided, well, what else can I do when I'm unemployed? And so he made a career out of not working, and he became a writer and other things. Uh, it's it's a great book, uh, and I want to. Uh, go through a couple of quotes in the book. Uh, here's one. The man uh, is the ri- that man is the richest whose pleasures are the cheapest. Henry David Thoreau. Uh, Think about that. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> and then another quote uh, by this lady, Catherine Whitehorn. She said, the best career advice given to the young is to find out what you like doing best and to get someone to pay you for doing it. <laughs> yes, well, yeah. The, yeah, Marzal, you yeah. know, I was in, just quickly, I guess as we're, we're coming up at the top of the hour, yeah. uh, Andre Gortz was a student of uh, Ivan Illich, and Illich, he had a couple of good one-liners, like you can either have wealth or the time to enjoy it. Um, but he talks about another thing, which is that, you know, when we when people think about what they need, it's this whole concept of need uh, uh, that is rooted in our, 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 our economy, our way of thinking about things. So when you talk about why do people – everything that we, we have in our life, actually, we translate into a need. And then, of course, a need must be satisfied. So when I say to people, don't take trips, you know, get rid of your cell phone – this, those are things they need. Those, those are like – it's like I'm asking, well, just don't drink water this week. You know, I mean, they they, they couldn't conceive of that as, as uh, you know, something that could just be dispensed with. Mm-hmm. Um, they, would, they wouldn't ha- be able to maintain their self-conception, which I think is extraordinarily fragile anyway, without that kind of uh, endless consumption. But, of course – uh, all defined as needs. That's how you could have Buddhism in America, which is like the biggest joke of them all, right? Because all of those people that claim that they're detached from their desires have already translated those desires into needs. They're, they're just things like breathing and walking around. That's so. That, there's, there's you know so they can be uh, uh, absent of desire, you know, yeah. in, in that fantasy land. Well, thank you, Marcel. We appreciate your call. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ernie uh, Zelinsky uh, ends his book in a, in a, uh, in a question. Uh, he says, uh, "How much is enough? Hmm. Oh, yeah. How much is enough?" And uh, I actually, uh, I, I have a list of my blessings over a hundred, and I always read this every morning and evening, and I, and I read it, and then I say, uh, "I realize with over a hundred blessings in my life, I have more than enough to be grateful for." Yeah, you are. Well, thank you so much, Marcel. Yeah, hey, it's always great talking to you guys. Thank you so much. Well, this has been Let's Hear Charles Talk, and you can pick up the Point Reyes <laughs> Light and read uh, read me in print this week as well, and uh, I'll be on the radio tomorrow at 1. Uh, oh, by the way, our guest tomorrow, Melvin Goodman, who's got a new book out on City Lights uh, uh, Books, uh, Whistleblower in the CIA. He's uh, been on the show before and is a well-known former CIA analyst. So. Uh, it'll be at what time? 1 p.m. Uh, it's in the newspaper too. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Charles. This was uh, <laughs> Charles the Charles Schultz and Paul Raffel, let's talk. Um, And the uh, opinions expressed on this show, KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. Uh, Westmarin parents, uh, Inverness and Westmarin schools are closing early today, 12.15 at Inverness and 12.30 at Westmarin school. So parents are asked to make arrangements. There's a weather-related minimum day today. And and uh, there's uh, National Weather Service, Urban and Small Stream Flood Advisory for Sonoma and Marin counties in effect until 4.15 today. Watch out for runoff and turn around. If you think the, if the road is flooded in front of you, it's probably best to turn around. And uh, winds, high winds today, southerly winds 25 to 35 miles an hour with gusts up to 50 possible, especially along the coast. Tie everything down and drive carefully and watch out for down tree limbs and power lines and stay dry everybody this has been let's talk and uh, next week 
There will be another subject, but uh, <laughs> nobody knows. Nobody knows what it is yet because this, you know this is KWMR. Most of our co-hosts are out sick, so yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening and calling. Bye for now.